Hi folks, welcome to today's Dungeon Master Roundtable. And the question for today is, what rule or mechanic would you bring from another tabletop role-playing game into Dungeons & Dragons? So uh, I thought long and hard about this one, and I think over the greatest amount of time, the thing that I've borrowed the most from another game system entirely is the mutation charts and tables and rules from Warhammer Fantasy. Um, I particularly like the way that mutation is handled in the Warhammer uh, universe in general, in that it's never really a, um, a very good thing. It's, it represents corruption of like chaos and otherworldly energies, things like that coming in. Um, so your character might be able to um, brush it off or try and live their life as per normal, or they might try and use some sort of drastic surgery to to get rid of the more obvious form of mutation but the corruption is still there even if they've gotten rid of the the physical manifestation of it and uh particularly for like spell casters and things like that it's um it's a constant dice with um putting your your, your body and soul and mind on the line to have these extraordinary powers um and i think it works pretty well um it, it ported over from one system into another as warhammer fantasy is just dnd of another stripe that's really cool. Uh, Wally, how about you? Well, I'm going to cheat a little bit because a uh, little confession time. I haven't really played a lot of other TTRPGs. I did recently participate in a Star Wars one shot, and I actually found the dice fascinating because there's like six different types of dice and they're combined for all these different things. But that was a one shot adventure, and I don't recall any of that. So what I'm going to mention today is actually D&D related, but it's not in the official rules. And there's a book called Galder's Gazetteer. Now that was a uh, book that is on the drive through RPG and it was put together to fund the, or with proceeds going to the Cancer Research Institute. And so I, I picked it up and there is a mechanic in there that I just found fascinating. I don't know what, uh, why exactly, but it's called Midvantage. So in D&D 5e, you have Advantage and you have Disadvantage. So the rule that they put in this book is if for some reason an effect gives you Advantage and another effect gives you Disadvantage, then you can now roll Midvantage, which is roll 3d20 and take the middle number. And I just oh, thought, I, like I just that. like, there's so many times that that would be just so much fun. Instead of like, oh, I have advantage and I have this, oh, they just cancel out. But instead, we're going to roll 3d20. If you get two numbers that are the same, then that's the number you get. So if you roll two twos and an 18, and an 18 then you get the two. But it, it's a neat mechanic, and I'm very excited to try it out someday. That's really cool. I'm always a fan of rolling more dice. <laughs> exactly. Like a big thanks to all of our patrons, especially Joan. If you want to support our channel, you can head on over to patreon.com slash roll for initiative and check out the perks of being a patron. Fred, how about you? This was actually a really hard question for me to answer, not because I haven't played other game systems because I have, but because uh, for me, I don't want to really add more roles to Dungeons and Dragons 5e. Um, little confession here: I, I'm happy that Dungeons and Dragons 5e has done what it's done, but I actually think it needed to be stripped down a lot more. And um, it's a pet peeve for me that it didn't happen. So the idea of putting more rules in there really gets my goat, and I, I would I'll be quite happy to um, just dredge out more stuff and just throw it away and just consider them optional rules. Um, but I imagine that would not be a particularly popular way to go. Uh, but I still think it's good because it's good for kids. And uh, I, I like the idea of playing, you know, parents playing with their kids. But if I had to pick anything um, and put it in there, I would probably go with Star Wars Saga. It's a system that was developed before Dungeons and Dragons 4E. So they created Star Wars Saga and the game system is very, very similar to D&D 4E. And I like everybody just suddenly clicked off, went off, watched a different video now. <laughs> Actually, I was trying to think of what sort of dice, because I, I usually think of the Star Wars systems by what sort of dice they use for uh, their game system, because there's been some radical changes to the Star Wars franchise over the years. What's, what does the, uh, uh, the Saga one use? 
it's exactly the same dice that you used in Dungeons and Dragons 4e or mm. Dungeons and Dragons 5e actually mm. but they had a, a system of mechanic there because you're dealing with the light side and the dark side you know Jedi Sith called dark side points and the idea behind dark side points was that there was a, a list of criteria of things that your player character would have to do to earn a dark side point mm -hmm. some sort of evil act something that would take them closer and closer to the dark side and eventually corrupt them completely and so you had that list the dungeon master could then peruse and then sort of okay my player did that they get a, you get a dark side point for doing that and if you accrued enough dark side points that it was equal to your wisdom ability score your character went fully to the dark side. So there wasn't an alignment system. Mm -hmm. And when that happened, your character went over to the dungeon master and your character was no longer playable by you. So it meant that if you are a kind of person who is a bit of a D-I-C-K um, and a murder hobo, then this was probably not going to work for you. The only part of that mechanic that I never liked and I reckon you should ditch if you ever were to use it. And that is, you could get rid of it by spending a day or eight hours or something like that doing like a rest where you would like, oh, I'm so sorry for all the evil things that I did. I, 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 I truly at the bottom of my heart, I feel, feel you know, that I have caused too much suffering in the world and therefore I, I won't do it again. Um, and I didn't like that because what people would do is they would get their score about, too off the full maximum for their wisdom, and then they would like, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to repent now for uh, eight hours and get rid of one of my dark side points, and then they just keep doing that over and over again. So get rid of that nonsense because that's just no. Nah. But I like <laughs> the idea. Roll the skull crusher wishes you a happy day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Run unless, along, yeah. children. Um, unless, unless they actually change their ways, repenting is not <laughs> going to really. <laughs> No, it was a dodge. It's a dodge. Let's, let's yeah, let's agree. It's a dodge. So I don't like that dodge. Let's get rid of the dodge. Um, but other than that, I did really like the idea behind dark side points. I think it was actually better in many respects to alignment and how people try to implement alignment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My um answer to this question is uh, taking something from Shadowrun that I really enjoyed, which is the glitch mechanic. So this mm -hmm. in Shadowrun, you're rolling multiple six sided dice, and if you roll uh, over half of the dice as, I think it's ones, it might be ones or twos, um, but you still roll enough dice to succeed at uh, whatever challenge you are, you get a glitch. So you succeed, but not in maybe in the way you were expecting or something slightly bad goes. Um, it goes a little sideways. Uh, and I feel like this can lead to some really cool story moments. So I was trying to think how it might work in D&D. &D and maybe if you rolled like exactly the DC, uh, it's the like, okay, you succeed, but you you jump across the um, bridge, but you stumble and smack your face into uh, the railing. Or, yep, you grab this, but in grabbing it, you dropped the other thing you were holding. Um uh, yeah, it's it's a fun mechanic that uh, it doesn't come up too much in Shadowrun, which I feel like maybe hitting the DC would come up too many times in D and D. But mm. um, I really, really enjoyed that mechanic from Shadowrun. I, I, I love um, mechanics which add on bits of story elements. Like you get mm. into the city, but you've aroused so much suspicion in the guards that they're going to tail you and make it so much easier, uh, so much more difficult to do things surreptitiously in the city. I love that. Yeah, it's it's a mechanic that kind of takes the whole idea of like, yes, but, and mm. just provides the game master with an opportunity to throw those in. Yeah, I, I really like that. I mean, you could take like a thief that is trying to pick a lock and they open a chest or a safe or something, but they're trying to be sneaky about it. Maybe they're like in an office or something like that. And when they did that, they like broke something that was on that desk or left like some type of a trace mm -hmm. that they were there. That's I, I, I really do like that mechanic. That'd be a lot of fun to use. 
right well there we go um if you have a favorite rule or mechanic from another tabletop role-playing game uh that you'd like to see in D, &D we'd love to know about those down in the comments and if you want to check out any of these fine folks uh all of their channel info will be down in the comments or in the description below all right we'll see you next time bunch of um guys hanging out together talking about dungeons and dragons taking the piss out of each other yeah 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 goofing off that's that's exactly <laughs> what we want to see <laughs> what do you think people are here for <laughs> yeah, exactly